we are looking at the GNU image manipulation program. Now, we've looked at this in the mm -hmm. past, and Sasha, you mentioned, hey, yeah. this is like when we looked at white balance and fixing right. the, there was the cr colors. Exactly. There was like a series of like pictures of bathrooms and bedrooms, yeah. and we had white, and we selected the white, and then we, f yeah, so now we're not having white. Well, white, right? ba white balance is a fantastic tool for right. photographers and for Which you editors. White you have to have something white in the shot. Yeah. And I've suggested that what I will do is I'll actually take like a, an eight and a half by 11 piece of white paper, which I know is as close to white as I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. And I'll put it kind of off to the corner of the shot as I'm taking the picture. If I know that there's, there's nothing in this photo that's going to be white. Right. Or I'll just make sure that there is something that's going to be white. But what happens if you're in a place that doesn't have any white? What is happens? there such a place? There's got to be. Name one. The forest? The deep, dark depths of the forest. And the yeah? deep sea. I guess Maybe like if it's a little bit Maybe dark. Maybe like there's an internal picture on, say, a car or something that's got like a black and gray interior. Yeah. Right. You know, and you know like what's going to happen there, and we learned this the last time we looked at white balances. What happens there, Jeff, is that your camera is going to interpret the bright light coming in from the window as white yes. because it has no white to interpret so it's going to say well this is as close to white as i can get that's my white balance and then everything is off yeah the colorization is off and if you're not aware of that tutorial that we taught how to then correct that mm -hmm. make sure you click on the links which i'll post below if you're watching this on any of our online platforms if you're watching this on cable tv or another platform where you just don't have access to those links please visit our website category5.tv and do a quick search for GIMP, which is short for the GNU Image Manipulation Program, and that's going to help you to find those tutorials. And there are loads of them. Right. We've done a lot. Um, so today we're going to look at, hey, what happens if, yeah, uh, great suggestions in the chat room. Maybe you two can keep track of what's going on in the chat room. Sure. Nomen 5 makes a couple of good ones. Oh, yeah. Caves and tunnels. Caves and tunnels. They don't have white. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. If you're driving through a tunnel and you happen to snap a picture... Where's your white balance coming You've from? You've got nothing. Taking pictures at night. Taking pictures at night? What, where's well, your fireworks, white Fireworks, stars, the moon, that yeah. kind of stuff. The moon the is moon white. The moon is white. As Not necessarily. white as can be. Not if you get a blood moon. Oh, then it's what happens then? Then your blood moon just looks white. Right. <laughs> and it's just, it's just a moon. It's not a blood moon. It's, it's just like moon. I, pr I swear to you, this was a blood moon when I took it. Yeah. Yeah, but what happens when you don't have anything to white balance off of? What so, does happen, Robbie? Well, let's actually get into it, Sasha. <laughs> Thank you for that little lead-in. The segues <laughs> here are so just... so cheesy. Oh, it's... My goodness. No, cheesy? Come on, Jeff. Wow. That was pro. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to head over to Pexels.com. I love Pexels.com because it's like a, it's a free service that allows you to grab stock photos for how much, Sasha? How much monies are we going to spend today? No monies today. No monies today. <laughs> Just throwing stock photos at you. <laughs> Absolutely free. I mean, if you've got a blog or anything at all, jump onto Pexels.com. This is a free service for you to be able to grab some stuff. I'm going to do a quick search for Warehouse. And I'm doing this because I know a warehouse is probably a place where there's not necessarily going to be a lot of white. Some of these shots, yeah. Like, here's a good example, Jeff, of that dark shot where the window has been interpreted as white. Right. But it's very undersaturated. It's very black and white. So, you know, ah, yeah, I could adapt that and, and touch it up. But you see what I mean? Those windows are what it's thinking is white. Yeah. Right um, now, this shot. I mean, yeah, obviously, there's, there's no white there. Yeah, there's a lot of white. So the camera is saying everything's white. Let's make it white. Let's make it look like a hospital room. Um, so that's not a good example either. But some, like, you feel like? I feel like we should probably look up like a tunnel or a cave. Ooh, what about the one in the bottom corner? There's like oh. no light there. Well, that's no light. But what we're looking for specifically is like that white. room that is missing white that one's blue that one is an example that really clearly shows hey the camera has said the light coming in from the outside is white and so let's color balance to that right. the lights the fluorescent tube lights are white that's what the camera is telling really us would be gray in reality mm -hmm. yeah 
And we know that fluorescent tube lights, unless they're like 6,000K. They're yellow. They're going to be yellow. They're going to be 3,200K in a warehouse like that. So, And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the color balance of those lights. So we know that the colorization of that particular photo, this particular warehouse photo, is completely off. Right. It's got a lot of blue. What say we free download that stuff and start playing around? I'm going to bring that up. Okay, there we go. I'm going to bring this up into the GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is a free program you can get at GIMP.org. And convert that to my screen's color palette, and there we go. So we've got loads and loads of blue. So where are we going to start? I mean, we don't have any white to sample. So we learned the last time that if we right-click and we go Colors, Levels, and we choose White Balance, and then we select something that should be white, well, what's supposed to be white in this photo? I don't know. You're like, is the pillar white? No, I doubt it. And see what the camera has done is it said that that window is white or the light is white. It's very inaccurate. And so that demonstrates for us mm. what you and I were describing, which is if the white balance is off and right. it can't detect the white balance, there is no white, it's going to skew the photo towards some other spectrum, be right. it blue or yellow or magenta. And so that's what you end up with is this photo that gets uploaded to to pixels that is so blue, it's obviously wrong. Yeah, it's a funny blue factory. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we looked at levels, and that's the first starting point that we're going to look at this week as well. We're not going to touch any of the levels themselves. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to actually adapt for not the white balance because we don't have white, but you right. said it at the top of this. What color should this photo be? It should be gray. Gray. Yes. He nailed it. You nailed it. Nicely so done. smart. Hopefully yeah. I didn't hurt your arm. So, uh, well, I'm being careful, okay. and that wasn't a hard hit. All right. So we mentioned, Sasha, that we've got black, we've got gray, and we've got white. Right. So which one are we going to choose? Jeff, any guesses? You weren't here, but any guesses? Uh, gray? Yes. <laughs> so we're actually go we're not going to go with white balance because we don't have any white to balance based on. But we can correct what the camera thinks was white by saying, let's pick a gray point within this photo. So I'm clicking on gray. And now let's say the floor. Are yeah, you ready for, for this? Sure. Three. Okay, let's do this. Two. One click. Nothing. 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 <laughs> Pure thing. Oh. Pure thing. Again. So okay. Yeah, that was I know. Amazing. This is how we do things around here. <laughs> Three, two, one, click. Yes. Okay, that looks legit. That's Wait a minute. Awesome. What? Wow. Could it be that easy? Uh yeah, it can. Ah, uh, yeah, it can, yeah. she says. So just like when we were doing white balance, what am I going to do? I'm just going to kind of move around the photo until that's got too much green. Mm -hmm. That's got too much green. That's so pretty, pretty that's good. Nice. Yep. Looking good. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm happy there. Yeah. That's my happy wow. place. Why didn't okay. they just do that before they put that picture? <laughs> yeah, well, then, see, so we can correct that. They put it up for us, Sasha. Mm. But you want to correct this before you use the photo. And this is just a great example of a photo that came off the camera and got uploaded. And that's what you're going to encounter as you're taking mm. photos. You're going to encounter things where it's like, I don't remember it being so blue. But that's what the camera shows me. That's the photo. So these are not raw photos. These are JPEGs. And this gives us an opportunity to correct that. You know what's funny about that photo? What is it? Uh, we were looking at it going, oh, what would be white in there? I don't think there's anything in there. Mm -hmm. I had no clue those stupid pylons were in there because it was so blue. You didn't even right. see. I didn't even see them. Now the it's the orange going, pylons. Oh, that should have been white. <laughs> like yeah. The little strips. There they are. Look at that. Wow. And they just kind of pop out now. Yeah. But I still see a couple of things. Now, I'm zoomed in a little bit here, but I see for example, those air ducts at the top, have a they've, got, blue. they've got like a blue kind of greeny hue. So let's take it to the next level. I'm going to right click. So now we're stepping away from that one tool, the levels tool that we've been using yep. to get our balance. Now we're going to step into colorization. So this is where we can really tweak things. So we want to pull that down a little bit. So the next step is I'm going to adjust what's called the color balance. So just up here in colors, color balance, I'm going to grab my shadows. 
See this? So I've got mm -hmm. shadows, midtones, and highlights. First of all, let's start with shadows. And I've got blue, yellow. So this is the spectrum. So if I pull toward blue, it's going to go really blue. If I pull toward yellow, it's going to go really yellow. Oh, but if that I looks right. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> but if I find that happy medium where I've pulled out just enough blue, but I haven't fallen toward the yellow spectrum, I can just kind of get it in there. It's going to be, it's not going to be much of an adjustment. 6.4 on the negative. <clears throat> and I need to be clear that the numbers that we're approaching here, the numbers that we're hitting are specific to this photo. It's going to be different for yours. Right. What we're learning here is not the end-all be-all solution to every photo issue. Right. We're learning technique. Right. The tool that you can use for your particular photo. Yeah. And it may differ. Now, when you're adjusting this, I yes. feel like you were looking at the main photo. I really am, Jeff. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like the reason you wanted to adjust is because the ductwork color was off. So mm, would it good not point. Have, good point. Would it not have made sense to focus in on the ductwork to get the color on that right to adjust everything else? I want to be careful that I'm not affecting the entire photo in such a way that it turns yellow because I've pulled enough blue right, out of the okay. ductwork. Mm. So I want to I want to find that happy balance, okay? Right, okay. So so let's let's take a look at that. Let's bring out see what happens if if I go too far in the spectrum. Yeah. That duct work, if we, if we concentrate on that, is turning to like a yellowy green. Yes. So even going down a little bit in the photo, so making the photo lose some of that blue tinge, is not really affecting the blue in the duct work. Correct. So the next step, Jeff, is I'm going to jump into mid-tones, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And I'm going to pull down a little bit. Now that's fallen again too far toward yellow. So yes. I'm just going to be very, very careful that I'm a little more subtle with that. There we go. Okay, now, highlights. That's where things start to get exciting. Pull that down a little bit. You want to kind of, you want to look at that ductwork, but at the same time, I'm looking at the whole photo. I don't want to pull too much blue out. Look at that. That almost looks like you this knew, is knew what it looked like originally. That is, that's looking pretty good. Yeah. Now, one final thing. <clears throat> As you mentioned, there is still too much blue in the top here. Mm -hmm. Now, right. could that be because maybe there was like a studio light or something that they were using to illuminate things? No, or? I think it, it all stems from the fact that we've got 32, 3500 Kelvin lighting. Right. So okay, we've enough. got fluorescent tube lighting that is toward what spectrum? You said it. Yellow. I did? Yellow? Yellow. Yellow. Right? We all know that fluorescent <laughs> tube lighting falls toward the green-yellow end of the spectrum. Right. So you remember when we're looking at saturations and everything, what does the slider say? We've got blue on one side and what color on the other? Yellow. Yellow. So if the camera has compensated for the amount of yellow in the lighting by pushing toward the blue spectrum, what do we end up with? A really blue photo. Exactly. So in order to compensate for that, we need to pull back on that blue to bring it back into the actual reality of the spectrum, which is yellow. Right. Right. So let's, uh, let's look at what our final step here is going to be. And again, this is a tutorial that you can do in a matter of moments. Like we're showing you this and it's very, very quick in order to correct this photo. And so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go colors. And this time I'm going to go hue saturation and watch what happens here as I select blue the B channel, and start bringing down the saturation, okay? I'm going to bring that right down, and the saturation really starts to look, it's getting there, mm -hmm. okay? Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stop there. Now, I've brought that all the way down because the blue is pretty heavy, and bringing it down doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference. So, so that means I need to actually pull toward the cyan end of the spectrum. So I'm going to actually click on cyan as well. And now pull the saturation down on that slowly and watch what happens okay. and see what starts to happen oh. now. See that duct work up at the top? Yeah, that's more It great. starts to turn. It's kind of like a silver. I want to pull a little bit of yellow out of that photo as well. So I collect yellow on the spectrum. I'm going to desaturate a little bit just to pull out. What am I doing? I'm not pulling the yellow out of the photo. I'm bringing back the amount of yellow in the lighting right. without... Right pulling toward the blue end of the spectrum. So now, as clean as that is, I've got this photo. Look at this, folks. Look at the ductwork. That looks good. That looks silver. We've got natural yellow coming in from those windows. Not white. It's not white. Right. It's a natural sunlight. It's like a yellowy-hued light. 
Right. Is it possible to uh, paste the original f- just slightly beside it so you can see the stark difference now? Sure. Yeah. What I can do here, Jeff, I'm going to, you guys want to see that? Mm-hmm. I think Jeff wants to show you this. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to save this as, and I'm going to call this uh, an XCF file. And then I'm going to open the original file. You guys are going to be mind blown as soon as I open this. Ready? Okay, that was, that was our starting point, folks. Do you remember that? I'm going to paste that in on top. So that was our starting point with a photo that was not a raw image. This was a JPEG image. So this is a compressed image. I'm gonna, so now that's what it looked like. I'm going to bring down the opacity of that. Ready? Here we go. We're going to fade into our edited version. That's amazing. And there that we go. Great. So we have corrected not only the the white balance but we've actually corrected like look at how natural that sunlight looks coming in there yeah it's got that beautiful natural look jump back to the original photo what do we see and you may not have seen it right off the off the bat you may have thought that that was a natural looking photo until you suddenly see our edited version which only takes a few moments to to do that and then we find out that they actually painted the thing blue (laughs) <laughs> it was actually, oh no, it was actually a blue warehouse. Yeah. There were blue lights. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, but the fact is, is if you take that little extra moment right. with each of your photos, so you're going to be printing photos, or you're going to be posting them on your blog, or you're going to be posting them on Facebook or on Twitter or wherever you post your photos for family and friends. If you just take that extra couple of moments to just color correct it, tweak it a little bit, you're going to find that you're going to end up with way better results. Oh, for sure. Absolutely.